Depending upon the stage of the project, there may be some additional applications that have to be completed before the concrete is placed. This special application section will deal with the following installations. Floor connections. Beam pockets. Brick ledges. And gable ends. There are several methods for the connection of floor joists to the wall which include the following. The ICF connector system. Simple anchor bolt. Modified anchor bolt with moment connection plate. And ledge support. Should the floor connection be something other than light frame wood floors, an engineer's design will be necessary for the reinforcement requirements for the walls. This video will demonstrate the installation of the ICF connector system and how to install a ledge support. The ICF connector system is probably one of the fastest and easiest methods for floor attachment with the least amount of additional labor. To install the ICF connector, slit the forms in the specified joist locations and insert the plates into place. Once the connectors have been placed, it's important to check the connectors after concrete placement to adjust any that may have shifted in position. Fit each joist with a bearing bracket. In most cases, it will be necessary to insert cut pieces of plywood to fill in the joist cavity for proper attachment of the bearing bracket. Once the bearing brackets have been attached, position the joist between the insert plates and secure the joists to the insert plates with six number 10 hex screws. It's important to note that a minimum number 10 hex screw is to be used with the system. A ledge support can be constructed using a combination of Nudura standard forms along with a row of taper top form units which will create a ledge for your floor joist to rest on. To create a ledge, you'll have to start with a combination of form sizes. If the desired form size is a 6 inch or 152 millimeter cavity wall, you will have to use a 10 inch or 254 millimeter wall below grade and then make the transition to the 6 or 152 millimeter. The smaller width form must be able to create a ledge that by code will allow enough end bearing to support the joist. Most building codes require a minimum of one and a half inches or 38 millimeters. Stack the forms and follow the course placement procedures as outlined earlier. Once you've reached the transition joint, you will utilize the Nudura transition bracket. Place the transition bracket 16 inches or 406 millimeters on center. Simply clip the bracket onto the top of the rebar installed in the form below. Align the bracket to the web indicated by the diamond pattern and then screw it into place once the form above has been leveled. Once the concrete has been placed, install anchor bolts as per the local code that will connect to the sill plate giving a connection point for the floor joist. Using this combination of Nudura forms and accessories, you can incorporate the use of both bottom and top cord bearing floor joists into your design. Beam pockets can be placed anywhere along a Nudura wall. Additional vertical reinforcing may be required at these locations to ensure the loads of the beams are transferred correctly throughout the wall section. Start by marking your beam locations, then use two of Nudura's end caps and slide them into the cavity of the wall with the smooth sides facing the concrete. Once the inserts have been placed, be sure to leave access to screed the concrete to level after it's been placed. This will reduce the number of shims required for the beam to rest on. Nudura recommends placing a 20 gauge steel cap over the top of the end caps to act as a concrete dam. After the concrete has been placed and cured, 
Cut and remove the foam material from the beam pocket area and install the beam as per typical construction practices. Nudura brick ledge form units provide an easy way to create a ledge for masonry loads. With the extensive lineup of Nudura form accessories, creating a corner brick ledge is very easy. There are two options available, a full form miter cut or use Nudura brick ledge extensions. To miter cut the brick ledge form units, take two brick ledge forms and miter cut them. Follow the profile of the corbel on the outside panel. Create a square cut on the inside panel to complete a corner form condition. When you miter cut the forms, you'll have to pay special attention to the form interlock. You'll have to perform this at each corner where the brick ledge meets. The second option is to use the Nudura Brick Ledge Extension or BLE. The BLE can be used to continue a brick ledge on a 90 or 45 degree corner. Start by positioning the brick ledge extension on the long side of the 90 degree unit, ensuring the BLE aligns with the adjacent brick ledge form unit. Once the BLE is aligned, use the bottom edge of the BLE as a straight edge and mark a horizontal line across the form. This process can then be repeated on the short side of the 90 degree form unit. Use the BLE as a template for the removal of the foam from the 90 degree corner form. Trace an outline using the inside of the BLE. Be sure to use the straight edge already drawn on the form for correct heights and location. For correct fastening, be sure that the ribs of the BLE line up with the webs of the form. Next, position the BLE on the long side of the corner, 12 inches or 305 millimeters from the existing brick ledge form unit, and mark the unit location where the BLE is to be miter cut. Position a BLE on the short side of the corner, leaving 12 inches or 305 millimeters overhanging the end of the corner, and mark the location. Once marked, this 12 inch or 305 millimeter section can be removed. Move to the other end of the BLE and mark the miter cut location. Next, remove the locations between the webs you previously marked in the 90 degree form. This will allow the concrete to flow into the brick ledge extension during the concrete pour. Ensure that you cut the bottom of the pockets on the same angle as the brick ledge form unit. Once all of the cuts have been made, reinsert the 90 degree form unit. Fasten the brick ledge extension with 6 inch or 152 millimeter long screws fitted with plastic washers available from your local distributor. Nudura recommends two screws be installed per rib, one at the top of the BLE and the other at the bottom. Reinforce the corner seam with Nudura low expansion spray foam, filling the gaps that may be present and reinforce the corner with fiber tape. If the BLE is to be installed on a slope, refer to Appendix F of the Nudura installation manual. The steel needed to accomplish the reinforcing for the brick ledge consists of two different pieces. The first is the horizontal steel location in the main cavity of the wall. Its location is critical as it helps to support the brick ledge stirrups. Nudura recommends that the horizontal steel be placed within the second notch of the web from the inside face of the form. The second piece of reinforcing steel is inserted into the notch locations on the brick ledge extension. This piece of steel acts only as a holder for the stirrups. Finally, install the stirrups throughout the brick ledge around the perimeter of the wall. Stirrups should be placed every 8 inches or 203 millimeters at the center of each web space. The versatility of the Nudura form lineup allows contractor installers the ability to use Nudura standard forms or Nudura panels with insert webs to create a gable wall. 
In this demonstration, we will be using our Nadura form units with hinge pins. Simply cut the forms to the desired slope. Remember that the cutoff portion is not waste and can be reused on the opposing side of the gable. This piece may require additional trimming to ensure the slope matches. If this method is followed, it will result in very little waste. The cut edges of the gable will require additional form support during concrete placement to prevent flaring out of the panels due to the cutting of the webs. Simply take 1 inch by 4 inch or 19 millimeter by 89 millimeter or similar material and screw it to the fastening strips of the panels. This will ensure the gable ends maintain straightness during concrete placement. The Nadura alignment system can then be installed to support these areas as previously talked about in earlier sections of our video. If the design calls for window openings located within the gable, the buck options discussed earlier will still apply. For rebar and lintel reinforcement, refer to the Nadura installation manual in Appendix D and E for correct reinforcement of gable openings. When placing concrete into the gable ends, it will be necessary to reduce the overall slump of the concrete from the typical 6 inch or 152 millimeter to about a 4 inch or 102 millimeter slump. Also, depending upon the gable end slope, it might be necessary to reduce the pore lift heights from 4 feet or 1.22 meters to 2 feet or 610 millimeters. Consolidation of each lift is critical to ensure voids do not occur within these areas.